Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Advanced Test Manager Certification. We are in chapter two talking about the test management and continuing with the part four of this topic that is 2.6 defining and using test matrices. In our previous tutorials, we have explored a lot about the matrices and understood that what type of matrices are available, what are the typical examples, what are the primary dimensions, and how to effectively make use of it being a test manager within your project and process. Now this time, we are just trying to do some of the wrap-up things to understand more about the test matrices, which can be very useful for the test managers. In addition to all the learnings which we had, standard project management techniques such as work breakdown structure are often used to monitor the test progress. Now work breakdown structure is basically to break down the work into as simple as possible or smallest unit of the work which can be called as task or activity which is performed within a particular project. So work breakdown structures can be quite often used to monitor the test process to see that you know how much work we need to do, how much more we need to do, what is else remaining to be done at any point of time. In agile teams, testing is a part of user stories progress and on the burn down chart. Now burn down charts are basically uh, used to showcase in a graphical representation the number of tasks which are remaining at any point of time within a particular sprint. So during a sprint, probably imagine that you would have taken 10 tasks to be processed and completed. Now on each day, you can generate a burn down graph and you can see that what is the number of tasks remaining as on today. So every day or probably every alternate day, you create a burn down chart and you estimate that how much more we need to do and where are we right now. So are we following the estimated line of path or we have something different than estimated line of path here? The lean management techniques are used. Testing progress on a story by story basis is often monitored by having the user story card move through a column to the Kanban board. Of course, you do understand that in agile methodologies, we make use of Kanban boards or scrum boards to monitor the progress on our task. And we have several columns like to do in progress, verify and done. These four columns can be used to showcase the progress on any particular task which you have opted for and uh, the task will be in form of cards on the board and the card will be moved from each column to proceed as a progress and then finally once the acceptance criteria is met you mark the task as done now given defined set of matrices measurements may be reported verbally in narrative form numerically in tables or pick pictorially in graphs like pictorially representations are basically the graphical representations and generally we make use of tools like Jira and ALM to showcase these kind of progresses. The measurements may be used for a number of purposes for example analysis at any point of time to discover what trends and causes may be discernible via the test results that means at any point of time if i want to know what kind of challenges i am facing what kind of you know challenges my team are facing is there any kind of impact on the schedule or resources then definitely analysis will be one of the thing which for which you need these outcomes and the reports Reporting, of course, to let your stakeholders and your customer know about your progress. So to communicate test findings to interested project participants and stakeholder, the reports will be uh, measurements will be very helpful. What you monitor with help of the matrices and of course, the control control, which is also called as test control actions are completely dependent on the matrices evaluation and the outcomes. If the outcome says that you are getting deviated from certain agenda, certain objectives or goals of the testing, then the control necessary control action will be deployed in place in order to overcome that deviation and get back to the planned schedule. Otherwise, if you don't do that, then of course the deviation will grow larger and bigger and of course will lead you completely away from the schedule and then resolving that issue will be highly complicated. There are proper ways to gather, analyze and report these test measures depending on the specific information needs, goals and abilities of the people who will use the measurements. In addition, the specific content of the test report should vary based on the audience of course like to whom are you sending is that a something which is of that person interest now for example if i'm talking about developers developers would be more interested in the number of defects which are open number of defects which are critical 
number of defects which are uh, depending on certain execution so you know we just create those type of graphs and matrices and push it to them so that they get an update uh, all right there's so much thing to be done at any point of time and we need to gear up a little faster to respond to these guys and similarly if we put you know different matrices to different stakeholders of course the specificness must be very well maintained and uh, to the point also to add for purposes of the test control it is essential that matrices throughout the test process that is once test planning is complete provide the test manager with information needed to guide the test effort towards successful completion of the test mission, strategies, and objectives. Of course, the major intention of making use of matrices is to keep an eye on the progress monitoring. And these monitoring will definitely tell you that how your work is going on. Is there anything else we need to do? Or is it you know, going on the right way? Test control must respond to information generated by testing as well as to changing conditions in which a project or endeavor exists. If divergence from the test plan is discovered via the test progress report, test control should be performed. That is deploying a test control actions which might be predefined by the test manager again. So test manager should actually plan for certain uh, standard issues, deviations from the schedule and timeline and write certain specific test control actions to deploy them. Test control is aimed at redirecting the project or the testing in a more successful direction. Uh, when using test results to influence or measure the test control efforts on the project, the following option should be considered. Now here we are talking about that what factors does the test manager should consider in order to determine effective control actions to be deployed later during the executions of the lifecycle activities. For example, revising the quality risk analysis, test priorities, or the test plan, adding resources or otherwise increasing the project or the test effort, delaying the release date, that's not generally recommended, but of course, if in case you see that there's something more which can be added or there's something without which you cannot deliver the product, then please request to your customer that you can extend your release date or not. Relaxing or strengthening the exit criteria. If things are going very good, you can relax the exit criteria a little bit or you think that you're going little loose, then you try to make your exit criteria more strict compared to the now. Changing the scope of the project. That's again like something which is generally not recommended. But of course, the client can always come back to you and uh, say that, boss, so we are not looking for the for performance testing right now or probably the scope of the performance testing is only limited to 500 people earlier we told you 1000 people so you can change the scope in that sense not the entire scope of the project of course which would be uh, sounding a little stupid here but of course uh, you do have certain aspects which can be here and there and you can of course update that now that's from the point of test control actions because you do think that things are getting in a different way or getting diverted. You won't have enough time to do performance testing right now or probably you won't have enough time to test uh, these critical areas or some simple areas but the all critical testing has been completed. Then you can push those things or you can ask for extension on the release date or change the scope of the project and many other things like that to be called as a corrective or guiding action. I mean, in turn, you call them as test control actions. Implementing such options typically requires consensus among the project or operation stakeholders and consent by the project or operation manager. So this is not alone test manager responsibility and call that he can make any kind of control actions. So these control actions require uh, you know, authorization or consent from different stakeholders that yes, we allow you to do that or is, this is possible to be done at this point of time. So make sure that you have discuss this control action with everyone before you just blindly deploy that so being a test manager of course this is your call this is your responsibility but without taking everyone's consent and inputs you just don't simply deploy that the information delivered in a test report should depend largely on the information needs of the target audience example project management or business management so we do have involvement of all the different stakeholders so that they are aware that if in case we are deploying a control action, why would that be done? 
and what will be the outcome of that and what kind of impacts it will have on the process do we have to uh, tighten up our schedules or do we have to deliver more something or maybe you know we are getting relaxed then how how much relaxed we are can we take some break there <laughs> okay so you know every everyone should be aware of everything whatever you are creating and input from the management should be always there to assist test manager to take necessary control actions and outcomes from the monitoring point of view well that's all from this particular tutorial and finally we complete talking about the test matrices from this chapter and uh, we will be talking about the next topic in our next tutorial so that's all from this particular tutorial team should you have anything else feel free to comment below i'm always there to address your queries and answer them well till then keep learning keep exploring keep understanding the context thanks for watching the video team and happy learning